Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Tamiko Prince, the wonderful mom of Tori and Prince of the Brooklyn Nets. Thank you so much, Tamiko. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to learn about yourself as well as Torian. Awesome, awesome. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> Our listeners always want to hear about the players, where they were born, and how they grew up. So let's talk about that. Where was Torian born? Torian was born in San Marcos, Texas, a little town outside of San Antonio, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, he was the star of the delivery room, the whole hospital, because he was 10 pounds. And he was 23 and a half inches. So he's the biggest baby in the hospital, and everybody wanted to see him. So, yeah, he, he, he was born a star. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Who in your family is that Paul? So my father is six two six three. His father is about the same height. Um, his grandfather's on both sides was a little tall, but nobody, nobody in the family is as tall as him. So he was an anomaly. You know, he <laughs> he grew he grew in two summers. Like, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> was it, was he that child that was always way taller than all his friends? Everybody thought he was six and he was really three. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so he was he was that guy in 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 elementary and middle school, and then in high school. Um, around his freshman year, the summers happened. So in between freshman and sophomore, he shot up to six eight six nine. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Was that awkward for him, like being way taller than his peers? Well, when he was little, you know, because when kids play, um, you know, roughhouse and stuff, he because he was way bigger, he had to really adjust himself. But, um, you know, we helped him with that because, you know, he was still the same age. He was just a little bit taller. Right. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he adjusted. He's a He's always been that kid. He can adjust to anything, any situation, any environment. So it wasn't a big problem for us. Was he an athlete as a child? Yes. Um, naturally athletic. Got that from his mother. <laughs> uh, a little bit from his father. <laughs> his attitude from his father. It is athletic abilities from his mom. But um, awesome. <laughs> So he would run with the big boys. You know, he always ran with kids a little bit older than him just because mm -hmm. um, he was always willing to learn and, you know, coming home. And he had uh, training wheels on his bike, but the big kids was running with bikes uh, that didn't have training wheels. So they took off the training wheels. So he comes and tells me they took the training wheels off. So now he's riding with the big boys, no training wheels. <laughs> um, same thing with swimming. Like they go to the pool and they practice swimming. So he... I took him swimming one day, and we just went, and he started running towards the pool. I start panicking because I'm not a great swimmer. Um, and so he jumps in the deep end and swims all the way to the shallow side. I almost lost my mind. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this is, this is him, yes. <laughs> this, this, is, this has been him from little to all the way now. He takes, he takes risks, and he, he works hard for what he wants in life, so that's good. Wow. So when did the world of basketball enter his childhood? Well, he, um, at six years ago, we um, put him into the YMCA. Uh, that's where he started um, his basketball journey. Um, we also put him in a little league football. Um, so he, he loves football. Like, if he didn't play basketball, he would probably be playing football. Um, yeah. <laughs> so he, he did football and all the way up to his middle school ending, and then he went into basketball solely in, in high school. Oh, okay. So in high school, he yeah. played at uh, Earl Warren High School in San Antonio, Texas, for about four years. And yes. from there, he committed to Long Island University. Can you tell me what happened with that? Yes, he committed. We went, we started, I mean, we started getting letters and letters and letters. 
um, when he was a junior because he played AAU. AAU is a big um, amateur um, situation here in Texas. So um, he had a great AAU career. So he, he was exposed to a lot of people. So we got to go out to Long Island. Um, well not, I'm sorry, not Long Island University, but we we went to Brooklyn, and um, in his junior year of high school, so I was like, son, we I had to, I had to try to have a come to Jesus talk with him, like, son, <laughs> do not commit to these people. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have other schools lined up, sir. Um, just please <laughs> don't commit to them right now. <laughs> he was so excited, though. I mean, you know, Brooklyn is Brooklyn, and New York and Jersey is my my land. You know, that's where I grew up. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, I grew up in Newark, New Jersey, right over the bridge. And uh, I was born in Syracuse, New York. So, you know, him seeing New York for the first time, he was so excited. He was, you know, just hyped up. And I was like, son, calm down. <laughs> so we ended up committing. We ended up committing anyway. Um, so once he came back from that, um, his senior year in high school was pretty amazing. Um, he was the, one of the athletes of the year in basketball here in San Antonio. And um, he had a great senior year uh, as far as the the team. They went to state, played against Marcus Smart and his team um, in, the, um, in the state situation. So by that time, March Madness happened. So the head coach of the of LIU, he ended up going to another school. So that gave us a an out to go and right. decommit at that time because he wanted to play at a high, higher level D1 school. Right. Um, so once we decommitted, he um, Baylor came calling the next weekend. It was Mother's Day weekend. Uh, we went out there. We drove out there, and he loved it, and he signed with them. So that's how he ended up at Baylor. Wow. Which we was excited because it's closer to home. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We never want uh, our kids to go too too far from us, right? I know. <laughs> I was dreading him going being in New York, but look, he oh. ended up in New York anyway at three sixty five, right? There you go. So <laughs> meant to be. So the Baylor Bears. Um, I was reading. He was very determined awesome. to work hard and hard mm -hmm. uh, to be seen by scouts. And before he knew it in his junior year, he was on draft boards. What was that mm -hmm. like for him? Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it was nuts because he, um, you know, once, once he was, you know, became a senior, cause he was in, in at Baylor. He, he decided he was thinking maybe when he was a junior at Baylor that he was going to go overseas. And I was like, son, no, I said, let's stay in school because, you know, you got to get mama's degree first and then <laughs> <laughs> we can work on basketball. <laughs> so um, he stayed in that that year, that extra year. Um, so he, it that was like the year of the senior. That particular draft class was the year of the senior because a lot of guys actually were seniors in, in college. And then they had did it. They did have a lot of overseas guys come over as well. But he did graduate. He was at the he was at the combine at the time. Um, but Mama got the degree, so we're good. <laughs> and um, so it was amazing. I'm glad he waited because we, you know, when he was drafted, um, it was a big shock to everybody because they were predicting him to go like number 21 or something like that. But he ended up being number 12. 12. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. up to that point in his life, he was still young, and there were so many changes in movement for him. But how did mm -hmm. you manage to raise him long distance with all this going on in his life? Well, we communicate regularly. So every day I talk to him in some form or fashion, either by text, by phone, and now by FaceTime, you know, anytime. And he will call me, you know, because when he was, um, you know, trying out for different teams and, and, and trying to – you know, get people to know him and know his play and everything um, before the draft. You know, he was doing a lot of traveling. He was by himself. Um, so we just kept in contact and communications like that. So, you know, just trying to give him some encouragement and, you know, because that was his first time really being out on his own, you know, just all the traveling yeah. to the different um, different teams and stuff and just 
you know, kind of have them face that face that situation by himself. So, yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. It was the same thing with my son too. He was by himself. Yeah, um, yeah. And on the other side yeah. of the world, right? He was in town. On the so. world, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So kudos to our boys for actually breathing that out. <laughs> yeah, because it's a it's a journey. You can mess with your mind, but you know, you have to keep focused on your goal and and what you're trying to do out there. You know, so yeah. and that's what he did. And I, I was you know, blessed to help him do that because, you know, I answer the phone whenever he calls, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> no matter what time, eh? Listen, your mom, right. no matter how old they are, when he's 40, he's still going to call you and, and you're still going to answer. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That is right. <laughs> so on draft night, he was drafted, like you said, 12th overall um, by the mm-hmm. Utah Jazz, and then about two weeks later, right. he was traded to the, the Hawks. To the Atlanta Hawks. Mm-hmm. Did that come as a surprise to you both? No, we knew about the the trade situation when they drafted him. So we okay. already knew that um that was going to happen. Um but you know things have to get you know um finalized and players have to get placed and all that good stuff. So that's why it took two weeks. So um, but we did already know that we were going to be in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So how involved um, were you, Mom, at getting the initial stages of his career started? Well, um, his dad was more instrumental in, in the first part of that. Um, just You know, I was just trying to be Mom. I just wanted to be uh, the encourager, the comforter, you know, somebody you can come to and without all the business stuff and just be there for him in that manner. So in the beginning, I just kind of laid back and, um, you know, make sure I was accessible to him and, um, and encouraging for him and just being that support network for him. So, yeah, I didn't come into play until we were on our second agent at that time. Right. So, right. Was that process of choosing an agent difficult? Very, very difficult. Um, just a lot of, you know, politics and, and mm-hmm. you know, when you come into it, come, come into it as a parent and you don't know. And then the, your boy doesn't know either because it's very new for him as well. So we're we're all trying to figure it out together. And then we have people in, in that are playing, they know the system and they know what's going on and how, you know, people can get bamboozled, I should say, if they don't have the right people in place to help them uh, try to navigate the situation. So it was it was a tough time for us just because we you know we didn't know much, so we had to right. learn a lot quickly. Um, we did have um, Kawhi's uncle um, and his aunt um, and his mom. They welcomed us in just to help us try to navigate it um, because they they had a lot of experience at that point. So they kind of took us under their wing and just tried to give us some good advice as to, you know, what to look for, you know, what to make sure we had in place for Tori and, and stuff like that. So that was a good thing just for, for for them to be able to do that for us. Well, you're lucky that you had that because not everybody does, right? Yeah. It's pretty much trial and error until it is. You know what I mean? Like you're locked in with an agent at, at you know what I mean, to a certain degree, and then after your contract's negotiated, and then you hear that this could have been done better or, or whatever, and mm-hmm. it's too late. And sometimes it can really affect the player and 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 For sure. you know what I mean, their 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 overall career. So it's good that you had that. Yes, that was that was def- a definite blessing. I can only imagine his joy of becoming a new member of uh, the Atlanta Hawks. What feeling did he share with you during his first few days? Mm, he was nervous, you know, just excited as well. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, um, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you've been drafted, so now it's all good. But, no, you still have to continue to work even harder now. <laughs> yep, yep. You know, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't stop. You know, you, it's it's always a um, constant elevation of your game, getting stronger, um, and all that, that entails the lifestyle, you know, just getting adjusted to all that. So, yeah, it was, you know, the first year was, was big, you know, we just, yeah. 
we could we all navigated that together and then as as the years went on you know he adjusted and you know um went into his zen mode and making sure he was strong and his body was healthy and not doing all the lifestyle thing as much you know <laughs> right right you, you know how that goes <laughs> yeah yeah so but you know getting yeah. to the league is one thing but staying in the league is another right so yeah it's all about their sure. mindset and 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 what they what they want to do and what they're capable of doing um yeah. Yeah. yeah so he's big in music and he likes music and all that stuff so he knows that you know, basketball is not going to last forever, but you want to be the best that you could be at it while you're here. So that yeah. that's what he's been concentrating on. And then, of course, he's a he's a big music guy. He he raps, sings, he does all that. So, oh, good. That's what he wants okay. to do in the end, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> during his rookie season, he did not get that much playing time at the beginning of the season. However, during the playoffs, he was giving his opportunity to shine you must have been so proud mm-hmm. and and happy for him like what, what was your feeling I was excited I was uh ecstatic you know I was there for the playoffs so in many games I, I could get to I was there um in Atlanta so yeah I was excited for him I was glad he got to you know shine at that point because you know we went through this at Baylor you know his first year so you know, he wasn't getting a lot of playing time. And I would tell him, son, I don't care if you get out there and do the best two minutes of your life. Like, give it your all. Um, and so he's he's kept that in his mind. Anytime he gets out on the floor, he has to do what he got to do because we never know what those minutes are going to be. Yeah. <laughs> so um, um, so I always tell him to keep that in mind So because that, that's how he won the Sixth Man Award in, at Baylor. Because he was just, every time he came off that bench, you know, he gave it everything. And it could have been for two minutes or three minutes or five minutes. So that's, and I felt that same nostalgia when he was playing in the playoffs with Atlanta that first year. Mm -hmm. While playing for the Hawks, he had a turn of events when he suffered a left ankle injury and was out for about 20 games. Did that affect his morale now? Um, I think it just made him focus and work harder, especially that rehab, because the rolling of his ankle has kind of been a, a thing. Um, when he was at Baylor, it, he had he dealt with that as well. So when he was in Atlanta, he dealt with it. You know, so that's something that he has been uh, constantly working on, trying to make sure his ankles are strong and then his the muscles um, in his legs are strong, so that it, they can support that all that impact. So yeah, he 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 his morale wasn't down. He was just like more de- even more determined. Like I need to get healthy, and I need to get healthy um, for the long haul, and not just for the short term. So yeah, so yeah, he definitely worked on it. Absolutely, he continues to work on it all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to, right? You regardless yes. whether he's playing or not, he just needs to be uh, to be healthy. Yes, for sure. Um, so he was traded later on um, in 2019 to the Brooklyn Nets. Was he okay with yeah. that decision? He loved it because at that time there was a coaching change with the Hawks. Okay. Um, so Coach Bud left and went with the Bucks, And then they were introduced to a new coach from Philadelphia. I think he was an assistant coach from Philly. Um, came to be the head coach for the Hawks. So a lot of things changed at that time. You know, the dynamic of the team and their focus and, and what they were trying to do with him and how they were using him on the on the court. So he he was he was real excited about moving to New York. He was excited about it. He wasn't down. It wasn't a, a whole to-do. You know, he's not that guy. <laughs> but he was um he was uh he was very excited. Very, very excited. And of course it became a it became a thing because, you know, everybody knew his uh connection to L I U and how the, it came full circle that he's he ended up in Brooklyn anyway. So yeah. He was excited. Was we were all it. excited. Yeah. I, I can imagine because it's like going back to your stopping grounds, right? <laughs> so Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All all the family was 
in in cahoots. They was like, yes, we finally get to go see him play. Yeah. So yes, yes, yes. My brother go see go to see him in Philly and and um and in Brooklyn as well. He gets to go to some of his games now, so that's good. Okay. Well, it's good that he transitions well um, into Brooklyn because. Atlanta and Brooklyn are two completely different cities. I mean, the way of life is different. The people are different. So it's good that he was able to adapt um, quickly. But being yeah. traded from yeah, one sure. team, from being traded from one team to the next, sometimes comes with uh, so many expectations from the coaching staff and the players. Um, mm-hmm. Do you feel mm-hmm. that Torian is confident now in his new role with the Nets? I believe he is. I think it's, you know, still some work to do. You know, he's still adjusting to that position. Um, you know, we have players out. We have players still going through healing. And, you know, so I think just the chemistry that he has with the guys at this time look is looking really good. So I think they're going to work on that and keep that going. Um, he got a two-year extension with the Nets. So we're, we hopefully want to be there for two two more years. So we, right. you know, hopefully everybody gets well and we can see what can really go down when everybody's well. <laughs> so Of course. Of course. Now let's fast forward to a couple of weeks ago when the rug just got pulled from underneath everybody and we heard wow. that we had a player infected by COVID-19. And then oh a little while later, we hear that there's a couple of players actually on the Brooklyn net that were yes. infected with this this awful uh, virus. Were you scared at that point for Torian? I was. So, you know, constantly checking in with him because we have two, I have two little grands over there, my little baby. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was definitely checking in on him, making sure he was okay. And he was the one who was like, mom, you really need to take this serious. It's really going, going down like really bad. Um, make sure you got groceries. You know, he was really checking in on me probably yeah. before. And I was checking in on him, but it was a little bit closer to home for him because, you know, New York rose up like overseas, you know, Italy and all that stuff. So they have a lot of cases going on. Um, so he was, they self quarantined quickly. So there was, we were supposed to go travel to see him for his birthday. His birthday was March 22nd. And we were, due to fly out like on the 20th to come go and see him and spend him spend you know the time with him for his birthday but he's like mom don't come I'm telling everybody not to come here he said because if you get stuck here you know what I'm saying he's like because I have a 10 year old son here you know my daughter is here she's 19 so he's like I don't want the kids to be without you if you get stuck over here and so I was like okay so all his friends and everything he told him don't come don't come so yeah, he was real. He was very vigilant about it. Like he was like, "This is real. Like everybody need to get on their P's and Q's." <laughs> and uh, so yeah, he he definitely self quarantined. Took it very very seriously. Um, at the beginning of it, you know, when they first started yeah. having cases in New York. Mm-hmm. It must be a little disappointment for him not to finish his first season with the Nets. I know I <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. Um, yep. How is he handling he, that? He well, he he got him a, a a bicycle, a stationary bike, and then I think they do virtual uh, workouts and stuff at the, with the team. And so, I mean, you know, he's keeping in shape on his own. You know, he's definitely big on that. So, um, but yeah, I think he just wants everybody to be healthy once they all come back together. But the NBA is saying that they're gonna finish out the season, um, even if it rolls into the next season. That's that's what I heard. That's the last thing I heard. Not sure how true that is, but yeah. yeah. So he's excited about you know getting back out there. Of course he misses it. So well, like you said, as long as he keeps busy and keeps ready and does everything he can, you know what I mean, to stay healthy. Um, all we can do right now is pray for uh for the like you said for the for the rest of the season to uh, to happen. Hopefully sooner than later. Um. I want to ask you about it. He is a sneaker free agent and has built quite the rep for himself uh, with his shoes. Like, how did that come about? Well, I mean, this kid's been in sneakers since, <laughs> you know, when he was in high school. Uh, 
you know, he used to let me buy his clothes and everything, but I, when, I think he was about 11 or 12. He started like, Mom, I don't like that. Like, he started, you know, wanting his own shoes and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, when he started getting into to, to the sneakers, you know, we were, I was just a single mom raising three kids. So I was not buying them. <laughs> so he had to figure out a way to get his own sneakers. Like he would buy sneakers and then he'll trade them and, or give them away or, you know, to, to go up to the next level for another pair of shoes. But, um, you know, uh, so his interest was there very early, early on before, even before he got to high school. So, and then, you know, yeah, yeah. So he got the Adidas deal when he went into the league. And um, so, I mean, they send you so many shoes. I have for the family, for him, you know. So <laughs> he was all into it. And so Nikes, he's always been into Nikes. Um, his father was like, my kid's only going to wear Nike. So he had some, <laughs> he had Nike when he was a little baby, you know, some yeah. Jordan, but yeah. So no, it did, it didn't surprise me that he's gotten into it so much. Then he has so much now that he gives them away, you know, to, to kids or whoever might need them and just donate what he doesn't wear. Cause I mean, the, if I could even make a movie of all these sneakers, uh, <laughs> he won't, he, you know, he wouldn't even be able to wear them in his lifetime. That's how many sneakers he has. Wow. So, That's actually you know, he gives, he gives and yeah, he gives and, and donates a lot, but he loves a lot of styles. And so, you know, he's kind of eclectic like I am. I, I think I pass <laughs> that on to him. Um, so yeah. <laughs> So you pass on your shoe fanaticness to him as well as your yes. athletic abilities. All right, mom, you did good. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And 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 my fashion sense too. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's there where you he gets that ahead. from too. Yeah. You did all you could do. Good for you. <laughs> do you think one day do you think one day we'll see a, a Torian brand? I believe so. I believe so. I think um it's something that would take off and, you know, um uh, represent him well. I think that's what he's waiting for. He wants to be able to represent himself well in whatever he chooses to do with the sneaker brand and, you know, some fashion, too. He loves fashion, and he loves sneakers. He loves all that. So I think that we'll see more of that of him in the future, for sure. Good. What's it like for him to play uh, amongst these massive stars, like the Kyries of the world and the KD, like – like Kevin Durant, like what is it like for your son to 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 play with them? Um, I think you know when you're playing with your idols, it's kind of hard to like really fan fan out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because like Durant was like his all time favorite um, before he went into the league, and I don't, you know, what I'm saying I just like how blown is your mind to be like in the midst of game with. Kevin Durant, you know, um, I I can't even imagine it, but he just tells me that it was, it was nice to meet them and, you know, um, to be able to be on the same, in the same, um, arena with them and and to be able to play with them and just kind of chop it up with them. Um, but yeah, I was like, uh, my mind was blown and I wasn't even on the court with them. You know, (laughs) I was just like, I could just imagine (laughs) what that would be like, but you know, they just, he says they help him elevate his game and, and, you know, definitely what he aspired to do on the basketball court. Um, they give him a lot of advice. Him and Kyrie are pretty close. Um, so, you know, they, he, you know, he's his mentor at this point. Um, so yeah. So yeah, he was just, it's crazy. It's very, very surreal. Looking back at your son and where he is today, is there anything that you as a mom would have done differently? Um, I would say no, no, you know, God has a plan. I always say that like, we're, 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 we're supposed to be at the time that we're there. So, um, you know, hard times, difficult times, didn't know we're going to eat the next day or make it to the next, you know, situation. But, uh, you know, and we have people to help Tori. Torian was, Torian is a great kid. So, um, People were kind of on his bandwagon early. Um, I had a lot of people, uh, coaches and, um, 
you know, people in the community, uh, friends and family that just helped support him and, and helped him do what he could do. Because, you know, I always didn't have the money for the fees for this right. or that, you know. So definitely it wasn't a solo uh, situation as far as um, helping him focus on his basketball career. But, right. you know, it was a solo thing when I was raising him and making sure, you know, right. we had food to eat and, and things on the table and making sure bills are paid and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I was blessed. His father and I, we were just blessed to have that support when we couldn't be there. Um, yeah. So yeah, mm-hmm. I totally understand. It. It's so tough as a parent, and sometimes we can't do all these wonderful things that we want to do for our kids, and they're just so oblivious to what's going on around them because we always make it happen, right? We do what we do, and exactly, they never I, know what it go. We have to go through to do that. Have no clue. Yeah. No. Clue. You know, I I am a true believer of getting what you want is up to you, but how you mm-hmm. get there is up to God. Exactly, so. exactly. And I used to always tell him, and I tell my other kids to this day, like, I cannot be more excited about your life than you are. So yeah. whatever you show me, however you need me to support you into doing what you want to do in life and, and elevating yourself and doing, you know, making your dreams come true and all that, I am there. I am present. But I am not going to work harder than you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. When when thinking of your experience um, at the process of getting uh, Tori into the NBA, what advice would you give to parents of other amateur players? Just, I would just stay aware, you know, aware of what your child's going through. Try to try to be that support system for them, and also just um, feed off their energy. Like if they're saying they want to do, you know, they want to go. Uh, try to be an NCAA, like making sure their grades are good, making sure, you know, those are the steps that we mm-hmm. took as well. Just we had to do a lot of prep work, mm-hmm. making sure that he would be able to go to a higher division school um, with his grades and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a, you know, we had help from the coach at, at Warren um, to help, help us navigate that. I think um, having people in place that are going to help you um, and not hinder you. Right. So that that's those are definite things I would say. Um, and just to have a small circle, because sometimes too many hands in the pot, you know, can spoil the whole thing. So you don't yeah. want a lot yeah. of hands in the pot. That is true. So having a small circle. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can vouch for that. Well, mm-hmm. we wish Torian so much love with his onward uh, positive trajectory with the Brooklyn Nets. And we hope to see them back on the court again very soon. Yes, me too. I've been missing it. (laughs) I definitely been missing the game. Yes, yes, me too. Can't wait. I'm I'm tired of the the reruns, but until then. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Until then. Thank you so much, Kimiko, for wanting to come on Courtside Moms and, and... and sharing stories about Torian that we don't know. Because, you know yeah, what I mean? You, like, know, you don't have fans. You, don't, don't, have to, you don't, have to, don't have to. Yeah, for sure. You don't have to twist my arm to talk about my kids. So <laughs> we're good. <laughs> well, be blessed. And thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Have a good one. You want done, baby. I do it naturally. Oh, 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 oh,